Hi, uh, I'm Salma Hindi. I am a, an alumni of McMaster University. I studied electrical and biomedical engineering here and uh, today I'm opening for Ken Jong as part of MSU campus events. A little about myself, I had a very strict upbringing. Um, I only went to Islamic school growing up and then uh, a part of that upbringing sort of led me into um, being able to keep me and my friends entertained just because like girls weren't allowed to do much in those Islamic schools. So that's sort of when I developed my storytelling skills. Um, and McMaster University was actually the first time that I went somewhere that was not an Islamic school. And so it broke me out of my bubble. So after breaking out of my Islamic school bubble, I went straight into another bubble, which was Thode Library, aka Solitary Confinement. Uh, that's where I spent most of my time as an engineering student, uh, studying, trying to survive engineering and fulfill my dad's dream. Uh, but while studying, I sort of had to face a lot of questions that would like bubble to the surface, uh, existential questions like, um, is this really what you want to be doing? Do you really belong here? Um, I definitely went through imposter syndrome. Uh, but then other questions like, is this sort of where you can use all of your talent and skill um, to contribute to this world. But then I did what every student does best and I suppressed uh, those questions until a later time. I found myself just gravitating towards the Muslim Students Association on campus. I got involved with them. I was part of the outreach uh, department. And basically I was one of those people that would stand in the student center and give out pamphlets on what it's like to be Muslim and what Islam really is. And I noticed through this volunteering that people would literally rather launch themselves in front of a bus than to accept these brochures. So I was like, okay, there must be a more like interactive, entertaining way um, to be able to personally tell my story without um, without sort of like you know shoving it down people's throats um, through text or whatever and so that's kind of what led me more towards storytelling and towards comedy which I suppressed at that point uh, in my life but then it came up later so after graduating from McMaster, uh, these existential questions started to come up more and more. Um, and then I actually met somebody from the industry and they told me, they're like, you should do comedy. And I was like, oh, me? Like, are you going to cast me in a show? Like, how does it work, right? Um, and then they told me you should do stand-up comedy because that's how you can sort of get your story out there and relate with audiences more um, on a personal level. And uh, so I started to think about this and then I actually got to see my first ever live stand-up comedy show, which was Trevor Noah. And after watching him, I was like, that's it. This man is going to be my coworker. Do you understand? Like me, Hassan, Trevor, we're just going to be chilling with the boys, okay? Um, and then I sort of started to flirt with the idea of actually doing stand-up myself and um, after months and months of procrastination because of my own personal insecurities, because of my doubts, laziness um, and just general avoidance, I finally, finally took the plunge and I tried stand-up comedy for the first time ever um, and the audience loved it. And then I got a lot of positive feedback and I started to, I took a course at Second City Toronto and I did really well. Um, and then I started to do stand-up consistently from there. Ever since starting comedy consistently, I've got to perform and travel to so many places. Um, I got to perform in Texas, Chicago, Boston, New York. Uh, I just got back from doing a 12 uh, city tour in the UK. And then today I am opening for Ken Jong at my alma mater, McMaster University, which is arguably the biggest move of my career so far. Um, I've been loving the journey so far and I don't know uh, where I'm gonna go with comedy, but I do know that personally, I would rather have failed at my dreams than to never have even attempted them.